Welcome guys to Kingfisher's Trace Clinic. Today I'm going to be doing Cobb Live Bait. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Ding, 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 if you like it. What we're going to utilize today for our live bait cob fishing is our slide sinker, the nylon that goes to it, and this will be 22 kilo kingfisher, our main line which is from our non-return or our slide to our hook will be 50 pound FC, and I'll go through why we use that later on. Some thick kingfisher latex cotton, our mustard scissors, obviously our slide, non-weighted. For those of you that don't want to use a non-return, we can use a normal nappy pin slide. And our big gun number one, this one is black in colour, or our 4-0 soy hooks. And I'll go through why we use the two different variations as well. Okay. I'm going to use our big gun number one back to back or our 4 0 soy hooks back to back. I find it a much simpler way of hooking the fish and my hookup rates are very, very good on it too. So I'm not going to go through using candles and other hooks. How we do it? Let's do the silver hook first. It's going to be easier to see on the black background. Okay, so what we do is we take our two hooks back to back. These are our 4-0 mustard suis. Take our thick latex cotton. It's just easier to tie with. The thin one breaks a lot easier. And all we do is just wrap it up the actual shank of the hook until you get in line with the point. Do a couple more turns there, come back down. we go, just tie it off, tie it off, and tie it off. It's as easy as that guys, there's our hooks. Uh, ready for, and that's pretty much what it looks like. The reason we use the silver hooks is if I'm going to be using a mullet or shad silver hook. You want to match the colour of the hook to the bait that you're using, hence the black big gun. If it's going to be a mackerel or a quarantine, use a black hook. And again, all we're doing is just tying around the actual eye, straighten them out so they actually sit together. And there we go. All the way up to where the point of the actual hook is, over there, and then we work our way back down again. You can go bigger on your hooks depending on the size of the bait that you're using, especially if you're going to use something like a shad. You can go bigger on the size hook that you're using, but most of the baits that we use for our cob are a lot smaller. Just tie it off, there we go. Perfect for a quarantine. The nappy pin one is pretty much the, the slide that will go up and down your um, line it works extremely well if you are elevated okay so I'm just gonna take uh, one out of here quickly there we go okay so it comes in two parts one is for your sinker that you're gonna throw out and the second one is the part that's actually gonna slide up and down Okay, so we use FC, the 50 pound. The reason we use the fluorocarbon, if I use the soft um, line for my live bait, what happens is the fish sometimes turns in itself and you get knots. Um, softer line, of course, if you do hook up with a Garrick or a Cobb or any of those other toothy critters, the line normally parts. Okay, so, FC being a lot harder, 
It's also reasonably stiff. Stops that, well it minimizes it. Fluorocarbon is a lot harder as well. So if you tie a knot in it and you pull it, it doesn't part off as easily as normal monofilament. We just take our fluorocarbon, we just give it a good little pull and it straightens out lovely. Um, let's take shad. Let's just do a shad or a mullet. Both of them swim very easily, so I'm just going to do it with the silver hook so we can see it. Uh, and again, all we tie is a figure of eight. One, two, three times. Push through. And there is your figure of eight forming there. You can see it nicely. Gonna lubricate so we don't burn it. Pull the knot tight and you slide it. And always remember to slide it down your line. But we don't pull it completely tight. So we'll leave it with that little mill there, so you've got a bit of movement in it. I'm just going to cut it off quickly. Okay. So there's still a little bit of movement in that area. We're going to make this about a meter in length, from there to there, there we go. If we make it longer than a meter, it's very easy that a fish can come and tie knots in itself. So we try and prevent that by keeping it quite short. Take our nappy pin, go through our power swivel, and again, we're just tying a figure of eight onto it. The link to the figure of eight knot that I've done here will be in the description below, so you can just click on it. So there we go, we pull that nice and tight. And that's pretty much our nappy pin slide. The second part to it is this over here, which will go to our grapnel sinker. So guys, what I'm doing is I'm just cutting a piece of 22 kilo kingfisher nylon. And the reason we use that uh, kingfisher nylon is it's a lot cheaper. Um, fluorocarbon is very, very expensive. It's very hard, very high abrasive resistant qualities. So we stick to a cheaper nylon because we're pretty much going to waste this. If the sinker gets stuck in the rocks, it will break off a lot easier than fluorocarbon will. Fluorocarbon's got high abrasive resistant qualities, so to break it off is a lot, a lot more difficult. We keep it very short as well. I'm just going to show you here. We're going to go around one, two, three times, doing our figure of eight. There we go, pull tight. Okay, so that's the length you want to keep your actual um, sinker trace or sinker snooting when it comes to non-returns or nappy pin slides. The nice part about these sinkers, they come with a ready uh, made hook on it, a clip. Because it's got a clip, we just open the clip up a little bit, ever so slightly. When it comes to casting purposes, you actually hook your line on there. And I'm going to just tie some leader line onto it just to show you what we do. Tie this on. Your leader gets tied on with a figure of eight as well. Okay, so pretty much as you're going to cast, your lighter line, which goes to your sinker, gets hooked on there. And then when you throw, because that's your leader, when you throw, that'll hit the water, it comes off, shake, 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 it goes into the actual sand. Your non-return will come down as far as that. Your slide will come down all the way to there. And if you do get a bite from a, a cob, it pretty much swims off and picks that up. Okay, so. To attach it, all we're going to do with our nappy pin is you go through your line and that will be obviously on your main line when you slide and you just wrap it around. Pull through and then take the clip and you just clip it on. So there is your live bait trace going up and down your line. 
up and down your line. When you get a pickup, like I said, that hooks on and your fish swims off, your cob swims off, and yeah, you've got it. You don't lose your sinker as easily. Okay. So that's how this nappy pin slide works. It works best when you are elevated. In other words, you've got a higher point coming down. Or you've got a very strong bait, like a mackerel, a quarantine, something that can swim quite nicely. A uh, big mullet for a um, cob, a shad, anything that's a decent sized bait, and it'll just swim down. The bigger the bait, the stronger the fish are, the better they swim. Okay guys, now I've done the nappy pin slide. I'm gonna do the non-return one, which is basically that one there. If you're using live bait, you don't use a weighted slide, okay? These non-returns work well off of flat beaches, stuff like that, compared to the nappy pin where you need to be elevated. Okay, again, it comes in two parts, the slide, and the actual sinker um, stopper. So what we're gonna do is the stopper part, we attach to our sinker, once again like this, um, with the swivel facing up your line, up your leader. We'll go to the beach, we'll take our sinker, and again, we throw it out, it's gonna hit the water, that comes off, your leader goes over there. So there we go. So there's our lovely sandbank that we're throwing over for the cob to make the trace. And these big guns are offset, the same as a sui. When using live bait, an offset hook works better. When you get the bite, you tighten up, pull into it, and the hook actually turns to go into the corner of the mouth compared to a straight hook. So you definitely have a better chance with an offset hook than you do with an inline hook. That's why we use these hooks for live bait. Okay, so there's our non-return, non-weighted. Again, we're gonna take our FC fluorocarbon, and like I said in the beginning, about a meter in length. So that's the FC fluorocarbon, it's a Siglon. You pull it, and it goes straight. It's a, that's what makes it so nice, it goes straight, guys. It's a very hard line, so it's very abrasive resistance. When it goes into the cob's throat, those teeth at the back, the crusher part of it, it doesn't wear through as easily as normal monofilament nylon or leader line. Again, we're gonna go through. All we're gonna do is a figure of eight. And the reason we use a black hook is for mackerel, um, quarantine, and cob love quarantine and mackerel, guys. So it's definitely the most popular hook used for catching cob. Tied a figure of eight. Pull it tight and again, slide it down. Don't pull on the hook, it causes a pigtail. So we slide it down ever so slowly until we get a little loop in there. There we go, so there's a lot of movement still. Cut off the tag end. take our non-return part of it. And like I said, it's gonna be a meter in length. We're just gonna shorten that a bit. There we go, one, two, three. And I can't stress enough how important it is to actually try and keep your hook snoot short. Okay, two main reasons. The first is that the fish doesn't tie itself in a knot. The second is, if you're actually sliding, it's easier to slide something that's got a shorter um, piece of nylon on it or fluorocarbon on it, because it'll actually work easier. If it's long, it goes all over the place and it's harder to get that bait out. Okay, so we keep it short as possible. We've got all the movement that we want in our actual trace. Show you how we attach it. I'm just gonna push this down a bit that over there. So we've pretty much thrown that out on a flat sand bank. We now take our non-return slide and we just clip it underneath the actual line like that. You see that? And then we just wrap it around. One, 
two, three, four times, and then take our clip and hook it back in. So there it is, there's our non-return. That's how it works. So every time the wave pulls your bait back, it goes forward, back, forward, until it gets down to where our actual swivel is. Now your live bait swimming around, you get a picker, and that sinker gets picked up by the actual non-return there. And it swims around, you don't lose your actual sinker. So keep that very short, it's very important that you do it. It won't get hooked in the rocks if it's short. Obviously the garrick or the cob is going to swim up around. It's very important that you keep that sinker trace or snooting very short, guys. See guys make it long like that, it tangles up. Um, keeping this also short prevents it from going around the actual sinker as well, which is also very important, guys. And ladies. Okay, so that's it there. That's your non-return. Very simple, very easy, guys. There we go. Okay, guys, the bait part of this video, I'm just going to show you quickly. This is obviously not a live mackerel. It's pretty dead at the moment. Um, but to rig it is so simple. It's, it's actually ridiculous. Easiest way to do it, make sure you've got a toothpick. Because I'm using a mackerel as bait or a carantine, I'll be using our big gun, number one. The black hook matches in with the black of the back of the actual baits that we're using. If it was a mullet or a shad, I'd use a silver hook. So let's go through this quickly. Um, because cob are very visual, that's why we use the different hooks. It makes a difference, it definitely does. Okay, so we take a toothpick. I've got my mackerel. I've got either a wet cloth, whatever it might be, a wet cloth, or if you don't have any cloth, your hands must be wet. You don't want to take the slime off the fish. It's very important. Take a toothpick. I'm just going to use my hands here today. And on the top, where that ridge runs, and you've got the actual uh, dorsal, we take our toothpick. We don't stick it in. We go under the skin. It's very important. Now remember, your fish is going to be flapping around. That's why a cloth works so much better. Take it and just midway in that dorsal area, go underneath the actual skin and we just push it lightly along the back. Over there, you can feel it, it's gone about a centimeter underneath. We then either just break it off or we cut it off. Okay, take your finger then and just slide it a little bit further along. So it's literally two centimeters under the skin. We then take our uh, big gun hook. We're not going to go deep into the skin either. It's very important that you go just under the toothpick. So we go there. There's the toothpick. I can feel it. And straight out. Okay. So there is our bait ready to go. And it's head forward so if the mackerel wants to go that way, he has to go in the line of where you've actually thrown. He can't swim backwards. If you're pulling him backwards, you will kill it. It has to go as close to the head area as possible. So there we go, guys. That's how we actually rig our live mackerel or quarantine for our cob. And you can see there's a lot of movement because I haven't pulled that knot tight. I'm using a moss bunker here for demonstration purposes. It's obviously dead, guys, like I said before. Toothpick, and it's exactly the same as you would do a mullet. You take your toothpick, where the top of the dorsal is, halfway down, where the dorsal fin is, over there, halfway down, is where you're going to insert your toothpick. So you go underneath, just under the skin, push it along, take your scissors, pliers, whatever you have, cut it off, take your finger, slide it ever so gently down. Make sure your hands are wet or you've got a cloth because a moss bunker goes crazy. Silver hook, silver fish, silver bait, moss bunker and mullet. Make sure you use silver hooks for it. 
We go again just under where the toothpick was, straight out. So it's literally just under that toothpick that's actually holding it. And if you pull, you can see it's quite hard to actually pull that loose. There we go guys, as simple as that for doing a moss bunker or a mullet. Very simple, very easy guys, there we go.